right. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back. It's been fun. No, actually, nothing's been fun. Because I haven't talked about anything yet. But, here we are again for this lovely little thing I call WTF, where I bitch about wrestling. Icky's loving it. He's crying already. Got me a couple yinglings, because tonight I'm going to talk about Vince Russo. Yeah, any wrestling fan who knows Vince Russo. Yeah. You might need a couple of these. But, I guess to be fair... Vince Russo, first of all, who is Vince Russo, you might ask, for those of you that don't want I know some people watch this and have no idea what anything I talk about, so, a little backstory. Vince Russo was the head writer for the WWF for a number of years. Uh, a lot of people say that he kind of helped pioneer the... He was one of the big writers for the Attitude Era. Where it got really kind of sexual, very... Um, lewd <laughs> would be the, the best word I could describe it. And basically, long story short, in... 2000, I believe, uh, Vince Russo and another writer, Ed Ferrara, they leave the WWF. Just out of the blue, they just walk off. And they go to WCW to work there. And any wrestling fan who had followed the Monday Night War pretty much had the same thing. Like, oh my god, what is going to happen now? The two head, the two big writers from the WWF have just walked over to the other side. And by this point, WCW was damn near unwashable. I say damn near because they don't... WCW in 90... 98-99 was just brutal. Unbelievably brutal. Because once once the NWO angle when it did it like sailed its course and just disappeared that company had no idea where the fuck to go from here. They had no clue. At least it seemed that way. I, they might have had a clue. But if they did, fucked if I saw it. So, then, they, uh, Eric Bischoff, who was running the company at the time and was just spending money out the wazoo, you know, doing everything he could to, uh, to bring the WWF down. They basically remove him from power. And that's when they bring Vince Russo and Ed Ferrara in. And I believe this was on the Monday Night War DVD that I have. Uh, somebody, I think it was Benoit, Chris Benoit. He said, great, now we have their writers in here. We now can have that success on our show. And... <laughs> it was funny he said that because Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, Perry Saturn all left maybe months later. But anyway. Uh... Really, the first... Again, 
I'm going strictly by what I've seen in videos and YouTube because I did not watch WCW past '98. By then, Steve Austin had pretty much grabbed my attention, and I never looked back. But one of the first things that Vince Russo did, and uh, I liked it. I, I like this idea. Him and Eric, well, Eric Bischoff had come back as an on-air personality. He wasn't in power though. And the first thing they both did was they called everybody out and said, "You know what? This company is so fucking broken. We're just gonna start over. We're just gonna we're gonna hit the reset button and we're gonna start this shit over." And the first thing we're going to do is, everybody with a title belt, hand it over. And so they basically took all the belts from all the champions and restarted the company from, from scratch. So nobody was number one contender, nobody was champion, nothing. And for a company that was in that bad of shape, that wasn't a bad call. And to their credit, they tried to put emphasis on the younger talent. And that's something WCW was so bad at. They sucked at getting the younger guys over. And you know, again, by this time, the WWF had gone total youth movement pushing um, Edge, Christian Cage, the Hardys, the Dudleys, all these younger guys. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then guys like The Undertaker, Steve Austin, uh, Mick Foley, they were the elder. They were the elder group. Amazingly enough. But they could still go. So, uh, okay, one of the, like I said, the, the whole restarting the company thing was, I felt, a good thing, and that's pretty much the end of the good things of what Russo and Ferrara did. Because one of the first things that Ed Ferrara did was... Uh, he he dressed up like Jim Ross. I've already gone on my thing about Jim Ross, how nobody can touch that man when it comes to commentary. Nobody. I said Jim Ross was number one, I think I said Joey Styles was number two. But, yeah, Joey Styles is very close. The only reason he's that close is because Joey Styles was able to commentate pay-per-views by himself. You can't... You can't gawk at that. But... Ed Ferrara would come out dressed as Jim Ross, but he wouldn't be called Jim Ross or JR or whatever. They instead call him Oklahoma. Because Jim Ross is predominantly from Oklahoma. He's... Oklahoma Sooner Boy through and through. And so, you would think that it was just a simple parody. You know, he's just going to come out and be a, a Jim Ross type person. But no. No! <laughs> Russo and Ferrara, they can fuck this up even more. They can just totally. They looked at this and they said, "We can totally fuck this up even more. We can be the most hated assholes in this company. Hell, we can be the most hated assholes in wrestling." So, what do they do? Well, uh, as I said once before, Jim Ross suffers from uh, Bell's Palsy. 
where one half of his face went completely numb at one time, and that's why he has kind of like that um, that slurring speech that he does. But he somehow managed to still be the best play-by-play man in the fucking business. Of course, that's the first thing that Ferrara leaps on is he goes out there and acts like a fucking idiot and makes fun of Jim Ross having Bell's palsy. And yeah, you know, there's a difference between doing a parody of something and honoring it, and doing a parody of something and just mocking the hell out of it. You know, I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, well, okay, wrestling wise, anyway, when DX came out and parodied the Nation of Domination, where they all came dressed up as characters. I talked about this before, but... yeah, That still was working towards something. It was working towards a feud. You know, it, it had meaning. It had a point. Again, I don't mind it if it has a point. This had no point. The only thing this was meant to do was make fun and mock a guy who had ten times the talent Vin, or Ed Ferrara did, twenty times the fan support that Ferrara did, pardon me, he did something that basically two people in the world laughed at, and that was Russo and Ferrara. Nobody thought this was funny. Nobody. Because just everybody had so much respect for Jim Ross. But that's not the worst part that they did. Mm-mm. No. Because Vince Russo decided he's going to make himself the main heel. You know, like, um... Oh. Oh, darn. Who... Who was that? Who, um... Who used a real-life situation and transformed himself into probably one of the most hated villains ever. Oh. Dash it all. Who was that? I should know this. Oh, wait. I do know this. Vince McMahon! Vince Russo just totally goes McMahon on WCW. He he publicly announces he's running this company and he's going to push who he wants, make champions of who he wants, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. And suddenly... Again, just out of the blue, all of these groups start popping up in WCW. Who the fuck were they? Um, you had the Filthy Animals. I remember them. I remember hearing about them. You had... Uh, there was a boy band... Uh, tag team, I think it's called Three Count, and they were actually some really good wrestlers. It was Evan Courageous, uh, Shannon Moore, and I believe Shane Helms. Uh, who else? You had uh, the the Redneck Group that Kurt Henning was with. Um, you had. God, I don't know. But eventually it all came down to another NWO because suddenly the younger guys all came together to form one group. And that was the uh, the New Blood. And the New Blood formed to get rid of the older guys, which I believe was called the Millionaire's Club. And it made... This was a good a- this was a good idea. 
This is a great idea. The younger guys, the younger, hungrier guys, are pissed off that the older guys won't get the fuck out of the way and let them have a chance in the spotlight. Great concept. Very poor execution. Because... Well, let's just say it. The older guys just dominated them. Well, no, no. They didn't even dominate them. The younger guys... They beat the shit out of them. But the older the old guys were smart enough to put in their contracts that they had total creative control over everything. I look at you, Hulk Hogan. Because Hulk Hogan put it in his contract that if he didn't want to do something, he's like, you know what, fuck you. I'm going to do it myself. I don't care. I'm Hulk Hogan. I'll get to that. There, there's a big thing of that. But, uh, my, my last video where I talked about Goldberg, I mentioned this storyline. Where uh, he was in a match with Kevin Nash and Scott Steiner. And Nash was going to give him the jackknife, the powerbomb. And Goldberg fought his way out and pushed him aside and just walked off. Walked out of the ring. And that's where they... No joke, this is a promo. They said, at New Blood Rising, Goldberg refused to follow the script. let that sink in for a minute because okay you're a wrestling fan I hope the majority of the people watching this are wrestling fans if you're not follow me on this one or you know what let's take it out of context let's go with something that everybody knows um movies yeah no better yet TV. We'll go with TV. Um, in the background right now, I have two and a half men on. So we'll use that. Okay. Let's say that um, let's just say on an episode of Two and a Half Men, the current one. I haven't watched the current one, but I'm just going with it. On episode of Two and a Half Men, Ashton Kutcher comes out they're doing a scene, and he just walks off. Just walks off the set. Like, let's just say they're doing this live for some odd reason. They're doing a live episode of Two and a Half Men, and he just walks off the stage. You you would understand. You probably understand why. There, there was a problem if you'd be vocal about it. But, you would assume there would be some kind of professionalism. That if he had a problem, he wouldn't walk off. You know? Because there's people watching. There's millions of people watching. There's millions of dollars involved. And it's unprofessional. And you're basically cheating the people that paid to see you. And it's incredibly unprofessional. And you're all but screwing any future projects that you might do with these people. And, um, oh, by the way, it's unfucking professional!
So, I blame Goldberg. <laughs> I blame Goldberg for walking out. Okay. But, I also blame Vince Russo for breaking kayfabe. You don't do this. We know it's fake. We know it's bullshit. Okay? We know it's not a real thing. But we don't want to be told that. You know? We do not want somebody telling us that it's fake. I hate that. I hate when people say, oh, you watch wrestling. That's so fake. No shit, Sherlock. I'm not an idiot. Or, like, you do realize it's not real. No, I did not know that. Well, fuck it all. I was wrong. I thought this was real. I'm going to see The Hobbit. <laughs> This is before The Hobbit comes out. By the time this airs, it'll be all out there already, but... I don't want somebody to say, You're going to see The Hobbit? You know that's just a movie. That's not real. <coughs> God damn it. I'm sorry. <coughs> I keep burping now. And to make matters worse, they build a storyline. That's the tagline. It says, At New Blood Rising, Goldberg went off script. So he's going to have a match, I believe, with Scott Steiner. And this is what it said. I swear to God. It's like, it's Goldberg versus Scott Steiner. at Slamboree, I think it was. But there's like, there's no rules and no script. Yeah. No script. In other words, these guys are just going to go out there and have a fake fight. That, that, that's basically what it is. There's, there's no story involved. There's no character involvement. No... They're not following a script, people. They're just going to go out there and shashay around the ring. One of the guys going to lay down and pin the other one. There's your match. Fuck. But, probably the, the one thing that I know more about Vince Russo was um, uh, it was I think the last bash at the beach Hulk Hogan was set to wrestle Jeff Jarrett for the title and Russo had been on this big Jarrett kick and as the match began the bell rang and Jarrett immediately Goes to the floor. He lays down. Announcers have no fucking clue what's going on. And you see Vince Russo out there. And he's yelling at Hogan. He's like, pin him. Fucking pin him. Do whatever. And Hogan kind of is looking at him. He's like, is this, you know, is this your thing, Russo? This is what you do now? And he says, like, this is why the companies the way it is now. It's because of bullshit like this. And of course, Russo comes out later. Now, Hogan pins him. And they hand him the belt. And he walks off. And Russo comes out and feels the need to explain himself. And he says... Yeah. 
He says, like, I have a wife, I have three kids, I don't need this bullshit. From day one, I've been involved with the politics of WCW, and it's made me sick, and blah, blah, blah. And he basically runs Hulk Hogan down, calling him uh, a prima donna. And he says, like, tonight, uh, Hogan gonna, was going to use his creative control card. Again, we're breaking kayfabe. By the way, people, you're paying money to see a fake sport. <laughs> this isn't real. Hint, hint. So, he's like, tonight Hogan was going to use his creative control card. And he was going to beat Jarrett tonight. And I said, fuck you, Hulk Hogan. Like, so yeah, you beat him, you beat him but you're never coming back to work for me again. He goes, I want somebody that I can actually depend on who won't use creative licensing. And so later that night they had another match with uh, Booker T and Jeff Jarrett. What else did fucking Russo do? I, like I said, he booked himself to be the main heel. So many matches. He did some kind of... another. Going back to the whole Goldberg feud... Uh, there was a match where he was in a cage match and he won the world title. Um, did I mention Russo was in charge when David Arquette won the world title? He was. I bet he had something to do with that. But he did some kind of feud with uh, Goldberg where Goldberg had to start all over. He was zero and zero and zero, and if he lost one match, he'd be gone. Uh, he had a real hard-on for Tank Abbott, the UFC fighter. Uh, wow. And then Russo, after he got fired from WCW, he went to book TNA. And, you know, the one thing I can say about Vince Russo... I can say many things, but one thing you can guarantee, you know you're watching a Vince Russo booked show when every match has a gimmick to it. And if you look at TNA back in like the 2010 era, every match had a fucking gimmick. Every match. They had street fights. That, why do you need a street fight? You had casket matches TNA why do you need a casket match there's only one person that needs a casket match that's the Undertaker he invented the fucking thing I, I don't even know if Russo is still doing wrestling anymore I, he always said that he wanted to get out of it I hope he did I, I really hope that man left wrestling altogether, because... Wow. <laughs> wow. I... That just blows my mind that he... Goldberg went off script, so we're going to make a storyline about it. Anyway, I've probably made not a lick of sense for this 30 plus minutes that I've been on. Uh, I apologize. It's been a it's been a weird day, but you know I haven't I haven't gotten any people telling me never to do this again. So I guess I'm doing all right. So. Uh, off to uh, I'll have to sit down and think of some other ideas. I have a few more in the back burner, but I don't know yet. Uh, I need to get in touch with a friend of mine. He, I want I want to do something. He 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 wants to get on the show too, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll save something for that. But anyway, I'm here drinking my Yingling. 
fucking Vince Russo. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. So, uh, I gotta go eat something because I'm kind of buzzed. I haven't eaten yet. So, if you've stayed with me this long, thank you. If you haven't, I don't blame you. Thanks for watching, guys. I will be back next week with some other god-awful thing I'll think of. There's a lot out there yet. I haven't even scratched the surface. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.